Thanks for staying with us. Responding to white nose syndrome will take the help of many different groups of people. We at the National Park Service are doing our best to educate folks and raise awareness of this issue. Wildlife veterinarians like myself are working hard to stop the spread of the disease and also making sure that our actions don't make things worse for bats. Scientists with the National Park Service and with other agencies are quickly filling in the gaps in research to better understand white nose syndrome. And the public can help as well. Both inside of parks and at home, you have an opportunity to help protect bat populations. Well, we just want to let people know about white nose syndrome. It's, a, it's killed over like six million wow. bats already. Oh my goodness. The Park Service has cultural resource specialists uh, and natural resource specialists working very much closely together now to try and address the disease, address the response. How should we uh, handle human uh, entrance into some of these structures to try and prevent or slow down the spread of the disease? We went through an assessment process to look at different alternatives that we might have, everything from no action to uh, closing the case and looking at the in other things in between there where we could responsibly manage the bat population, protect it, and at the same time allow some degree of access. And you can help us out. If you've been in any other cave or mine since 2005, uh, please meet me over to the side there and we'll help you get ready for this cave tour. Try to get you back As you visit parks, you may find requirements for shoe decontamination or gear or clothing restrictions. And some caves may even be closed to visitor access. Please help us by following these rules as we work to minimize the threats to bats. Our response plan includes screening all visitors that come to the park. Uh, we determine if they've accessed caves in the past, where did they go into caves, and what we're really trying to get at there is the, if there's any potential that they could actually transport the Geomyces destructans fungus to our park. We have cavers that are doing research in the cave that get in intimate contact with the cave and their gear, they get down and they crawl and there's a much more intensive decontamination process that we've developed and evolved associated with those users, dedicated gear that's only used at Mammoth Cave. As these response plans are developed and implemented, the Park Service uses the best science available to make sure they're effective. We are really making great strides to advance our scientific understanding of bats, of their role in ecosystems, their value to society. We have baseline information on the, the numbers of bats, and we want to monitor them over time to keep track of the, the numbers of bats and to see how diseases such as white nose syndrome can affect the bat populations. This is an anabat. It's a bat detector, and it records ultrasonic bat calls. With this, uh, we can better manage for bat habitat. We can know their habits better, and we can know which bats are here in the park at a specific time. The science keys into this very thing that for us to take care of what's here, we need to know what's here and we need to know more about it. And then to help people understand it, we need to know about the resource. The National Park Service brings some unique strengths to this challenge. We have units across the country and can therefore take a broad view that may help us in our understanding of bats and their habitats. We can also ensure that the science that is employed can be effective and consistent. Park Service really is playing a central role in the formation of a national bat monitoring network to take the data that are coming from the, the biologists working in parks, bring that together, report on that, do analysis, and, and, and really share that back to the public and to the scientific community at large. And that's fundamental to an overriding principle, and that's making decisions for resources, all resources, based upon best available science. You've got amazingly long ears. You know, the Park Service as an agency is a little different from our partners that we're working with. Uh, we're working with many resource agencies that specifically focus, in this case, on the bats. But we have this, this other flip side of our mission in that um, we are to help people understand what's here, enjoy it, and appreciate it for all generations. Our greatest opportunity is not only the connections we have with other parks and other places in the country, but the fact that, that we have a public who 
is so dispersed and so spread through the country that, that we get uh, unique opportunities to connect with, with all these people. Education and outreach are one of the most important things when you're talking about the stewardship of a species and that's something we can all engage in. All over the country here we have such a great diversity of resources and, and uh, it's really important to me that we protect those things and uh, it's all about preservation and, and uh, actually helping the public experience these amazing places. They visit our parks to, to have these, these really unique, unusual experiences in, in some of the most beautiful places on earth. And they already have sort of this built-in ethic to, to protect and preserve. And so it becomes very easy to talk to, with these folks and, and to, to get them to buy in to what we're, we're trying to do. Thanks for taking the time to watch today. With your help, we hope to take strides to protect these unique and wonderful creatures for future generations to enjoy.